Last week on the Cruising Kiwis, Finn left the boat. Boy's leaving us. Rob left the boat. Bye! And Rachel got emotional over a viewer's comment. That touched our hearts. <laughs> that touched our hearts. And this week, we do some free stuff on the Gold Coast. Yeah, 9 or 10. It was pretty... It was pretty bad when one of them shattered on my well, hand. That's probably but, ten. Yeah. That's probably ten out of the three things. Yeah. A launch drags down on us during a storm. And our mask gets struck by lightning. Whoa. Right on top we of that. We could actually get struck here. This is Rob, and I'm Rachel, and these are our boys, Finn. Declan and Ivan. We have sailed our catamaran Javelo across the Pacific Ocean. We would love it if you join us for the adventure. Electric shock. Oh. That was fun. That was pretty fun. Six out of ten. Six point five out of ten. But it feels more like seven. We're in Australia's number one holiday destination, the Gold Coast, but it's super expensive here. So the boys and I looked up on the internet and we found the top 10 things to do on the Gold Coast that cost next to no money. Now obviously, we did hire a car, so there was some expense, but we enjoyed the beach, we enjoyed the swimming holes, we went to the night markets, we had a great time. Personally, I think I could get more power out of our tap. You wanna roll with me? We're gonna feel the beat. Show them how to do that thing. You know what to do now. Yeah, nine or ten. It was pretty. It was pretty bad when one of them shattered on my well, hand. That's probably but, ten. Okay. That's probably ten out of the three things. Yeah, it's definitely a ten out of three. And then Friday happened. So the morning started like any other ordinary morning. I got up, I made myself something to drink, I went for a walk out on the deck and I had a look around. And that's when I noticed that something was up. This is what Bums Bay normally looks like. And this is what it looked like that morning. I just came out on board to have a look around. I've just got I Finn up, um, what's your name? Declan. Up to uh, move the boat because I came out on board and all the boats that were here yesterday have suddenly disappeared. And I thought, what the heck? Somebody knows something we don't know. They've all gone. I found a little message 
pinned to the back of the boat, which I could have missed completely. We could have gone out today and left our boat here, but there's an event going on in this part, a jet ski event. So we have to move. Imagine if we'd gone off today and left the boat, we'd be the only boat sitting here. Mind you, I think we would have noticed that we were the only boat as we got off. So we're bringing up the anchor. Declan's at the helm, loves it. Just got out of bed. You love the challenge, don't you, Declan? I feel safe in your hands. In truth, we were very safe in Declan's hands. He manoeuvred us through the other yachts below Bums Bay where we re-anchored ourselves safely. The plan for the day was hitting the walking trails on Tambourine Mountain, likely to score a 1 out of 10 with the boys. But we checked the weather gribs on Predict Wind. It showed fine weather with no winds over 15 knots. Perfect. <laughs> We're not superstitious people. I mean, you've seen Rob break up a mirror. I'm happy to walk on the cracks in the pavement, but I probably should have checked the date. It may have been significant. It was Friday the 13th. Probably just a coincidence. Probably. So it turns out our anchoring skills are not so fantabulous because we're super, 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 super close. Whoa, to that boat in front of us now. With the wind has changed, the weather has changed as well. So we're very yes. close to him. So we went out to re-anchor and now it's pouring down with rain and we're having a thunderstorm. But so it's okay because we've got Whittakers. It's okay because we've got Whittakers. Oh, you help yourself why don't you? Yeah, I will. What we thought was going to be a passing shower turned into a 50 knot electrical storm. Not at all what the grip had forecast for the day. Boats were dragging left, right and centre past us. The boat we had been anchored near disappeared and another one dragged down on us to take up its position. Getting a little bit too close for comfort. The thing is, look at the amount of water we've had. This is some storm. Oh my god, there's a full of water after this. Wow. Declan bailed out the dinghy and we thought the worst was past. We had been mesmerised watching the lightning in the distance from the safety of the saloon. But a second wave of weather hit us. The thunder and lightning drew closer and things began to get a little more scary. Just when we thought it was safe, it all starts again. And all the, all the boats have got closer to us. So they've dragged, not us, or they've been pushed back. This is pretty nasty. So I've been going to close down the wind generator because loud bang informed us that we had taken a direct hit to the mast and there was a smell of burning coming from behind the switchboard. Declan saw something fall on the deck. Fearing it would burn a hole in the boat, I rushed outside to find the anchor light in pieces. 
Check the room. Well, the unimaginable just happened. We got hit by lightning. And um, this, I just went out on deck. This was our light from outside, was on the deck. We got hit, that's all burnt. And there's a nice smell Plus? of smoke. Oh. Yeah, we just got hit by lightning. So I don't know what, Rob's not here. We just got hit by lightning. I, I don't know what this means, but we might have lost all our electrics. I have just received a call from Rachel and Ivan. They sounded, how did they sound? They sounded a bit excited. They sounded excited. They sounded definitely. very excited. I've got Les Harrison here with me, who's a supporter of a trust on, I'm a trustee on called Poet, a Perry Outdoor Education Trust. And Les and I were just having catch up. And now I see that the phone kept calling and kept calling. It's on silent, but Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. I thought I said to Les, look, do you mind if I pick up this call? Uh, they're trying to get, seems like there's something urgent maybe going on. I better pick it up. And Ivan's on the phone. He says, Dad, we've been struck by lightning. Crikey. Amazing, wasn't it? Amazing. Yeah, they were certainly uh, animated about it. And, uh, <laughs> they were very excited. Animated. And, and you know, you can see the worry in your, your eyes a bit. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Oh, that's not whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but we have, uh, we have talked about this possibility on the boat. The main thing is, is, of course, they're all safe, but uh, they're all very excited. <laughs> Good boy. Anyway. There's always a little bit of wrong on the other side of right. We become blinded and drawn like a moth to a light. It's a desert oasis. Just got struck by lightning. Our voltmeter has gone off. Fridge won't work. We lost our navigation instrument. The lights have gone. This one popped out. There's glass on the deck. It's not a good thing. calling every marine electrician in the phone book here on the Gold Coast and getting a no from all of them to come and look at our damaged electrics. I just got a phone call back from one guy who says they can come and assess us this afternoon. Boop, boop. So we're going to go out and explore the Gold Coast quickly, do something free and then come back for two o'clock. Ray Marine Type 1 Linear Drive with the wind transduced on top of the mast. Yeah. Um, we'll call it the DST, DST transducer, which is going to be the speed and depth. MPPT controller, the 30 amp, the solar controller, the 10 amp. Yeah. The lights throughout, so miscellaneous lighting, mm. deck light, running light, trial light. Uh, oh, the bathroom lights, obviously. By light. Yeah. Actually, I didn't check the back one whether that comes on. Uh, uh, I didn't look at that. Have, have you got a little light. strobe or something you can actually? Uh, yeah, we've we've got a it's, it's a, a solar light that we put temporary. up on okay. yeah that yeah, we're putting on the yeah uh, the fridge module, yeah. of which is the fridge. Yeah, um, you can question the uh, compressor. Yeah, we haven't tested the fridge it. and freezer. Is that working? The, the freezer is working. working, but the fridge isn't. Is it regulating? No, is it? Don't yeah. know. Change the just it. in case the module. Uh, um, which is more important to you? Keeping stuff frozen? Well, we've, we've got a full freezer at the moment, so, so I wouldn't want to... keep going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the D400 wind generator is by two. We're just saying a little bit more of a more thorough test on that. Yeah. yeah. It, that one's working. Mm -hmm. We haven't tested that one because it's tied up, but we will get to testing yeah. both of them independently and making sure that they both regulate so they don't overcharge your batteries. Um, two damp bus compressors, stern light, engine alarm, engine panels. Alternate. So you get the picture, it was a long list. And the million dollar question was, who's going to pay for it? Robert informed me on our telephone conversation that he'd only just taken out new insurance and we haven't paid the premium yet. So are we insured? If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, share it. It helps us heaps.